Apple appear to have changed the game when they unveiled their new Vision Pro. And tech experts across YouTube have been giving their thoughts. But so far, no opticians have had a word to say. Well, that's gonna to change today. So hi, I'm Robert, Style and Vision Consultant here at the Spectacle Factory, joined by Hisham, optometrist here at the Spectacle Factory. And it's our job to help you choose your perfect pair of glasses. But today, we're not talking glasses. We're talking new tech from Apple, the Vision Pro, which looks pretty amazing, right? It absolutely does. Revolutionary technology from Apple. Potentially. Potentially. Uh, we're going to talk about what we think is amazing about the Vision Pro. We're going to talk about what we think might be concerning about the Vision Pro. Some of the applications that it might have that could help people with vision issues. And approach it from a slightly different angle than everybody else has so far. Yes. But the other thing to add is that Hisham is a huge Apple fanboy. So um, what were your thoughts when they unveiled it? It was kind of out of the blue, wasn't it? It was. So they always expected that Apple was going to release something in the VR sort of in industry. And obviously with, you know, Meta doing it with Facebook. Apple usually don't introduce it first, but have their own sort of stamp on it. The emphasis really was on the actual spatial computing. It's an operating system within the Apple ecosystem but within a spatial environment, not on a physical MacBook or iPhone. So it's not exactly revolutionary technology, but it's a revolutionary way of applying the technology. Exactly. It's just Apple having that stamp on everything that they do, really. Yeah, and I spoke a couple of years ago, actually, when um, rumors about something called Apple Glass yes. were floating around about how when Apple actually do decide to get into that space, they'll, that'll be the game changer and that'll be the moment where people start to take it seriously. Exactly. Because it's we've had... VR devices and AR devices for quite a while now. Yes. They are good for certain applications, but they've definitely not hit the mainstream, even That's with correct. Facebook pouring billions into it. You know, smartphones started to appear on the market before the iPhone, but then if you look at this, the, the way that the industry changed with sales of smartphones after mm -hmm. iPhone was unveiled, then were the sort of years between about 2007 and nine, if you remember, where the smartphone industry really did boom. It'd be interesting to see how the VR industry changes after Apple have unveiled this device. Definitely. But let's go back in time a little bit, because I think a lot of people still don't appreciate the difference between VR and AR. They kind yes. of conflate the two. Correct. VR devices are relatively simple. It's basically like having a screen in front of your eyes. And it's useful for certain things, for gaming, for uh, watching movies. Devices like this are generally powered by a smartphone that will slot into it, and you'll have magnifying lenses essentially on the inside that turn that into a huge display that gives you a panoramic view. Yes. And we use that in practice to actually simulate different lens technologies to show people what it's like to look through different kinds of glasses. Pretty cool application yeah. for that until Zeiss decided to discontinue yeah. it. It's one of the limitations really in our industry where we try to explain to people what lenses are going to work best for somebody, but it's very difficult to sort of test drive, as you call it, you go and buy a car in the market, for example, you can test drive the exact car with the exact engine that you might think you're know, buying. But with spectacles, it's very difficult because you can't really ever try a pair of spectacles because no two spectacles, well, high-end spectacle lenses are, are the, the same. same. Exactly. Unfortunately, during COVID, we weren't able to use these kind of devices mm -hmm. anymore because of the potential transmission. And yes. then so I stopped supporting it. And I've kind of been wondering why, but I think now... It, makes sense because I think they're going all in with the Apple Vision Pro because they're going to be providing the prescription lenses for that and yes. I imagine they're going to be partnering with certain software. They mentioned it in the actual uh, the keynote conference that they did that Zeiss were going to be making the lenses but then they also mentioned that they were going to be they could provide even complex prescription lenses in the actual VR itself. So we'll be involved in that and we'll be one of the first providers for it but it's quite a way off. Yes. Yeah, so we're not really sure on many details. Of course. What we know how it works is that it's in an insert that attaches seamlessly in the actual device itself. So, you know, even if prescriptions change, uh, we'll be able to sort of reglaze the insert. One cool thing about the Vision Pro as well is the resolution of it. Like, oh, it sounds yes. insane. What you don't want to do is have such an amazing resolution display and then lose it because you're not seeing it the best you can. And that's yeah. what a Zeiss lens will enable people to do because yes. they give you that 4K vision in a prescription lens. Yes, it's the same as somebody's eyes may be capable of seeing very, very well, but then if we're not giving them the best lenses, yeah. then there's a limitation there. So it's the same with in the actual headset itself, they've said that it's capable of better than 4K and the pixel density is 
very, very, very dense. 64 times, I think I read, yes. more than an iPhone. Yes, so more pixels than a 4K TV to each eye, that is. Each eye, that was the emphasis. It's insane. So, yes. it, like I said, equally, if you're going to wear prescription lenses behind that, they need to be able to provide that level of clarity. Yes, and as we know, Zeiss can provide that. 100%. So, the next step after VR was AR, and Google Glass was the first to come out that did that. Ah, yes. They've never really caught on, but again, they have useful applications. So let's open this up and have a play with it. Yeah. So devices like this are designed to not take you out of everyday life, but actually enhance everyday life. So whereas with VR, you're in a virtual world. Yes. With AR, you're in the real world, but enhanced. So you can have an overlay of information. Now, that's quite interesting you said that because Apple tried to bridge that gap. The digital crown that you generally find on the Apple Watch, they've placed that on the actual VR itself on the headset and you can decide as the user how much you want to immerse yourself in the VR world compared to the AR world. Ah, so you can actually switch between the two. Correct. So you can, you can decide and change your entire environment. So if you're watching a movie and you've, if you've created an 80 inch display in your virtual space mm. to watch a movie and let's say you're watching some sci-fi movie for example you can put yourself in a sci-fi environment with just a flick of the digital crown you can then put yourself right back into your living room so you can decide how much immersion you want into the VR world and how much you want to have an overlay on your actual world and sometimes being semi-immersed is exactly the right combination because, yes. as I said, I'm still aware of everything around me, but I have information being provided to me via this very small digital panel. Yeah. So, for example, if I was on my bike and I wanted to know the inclination of a hill, this could provide me that information yes. or the speed that I was traveling at. Or if I was communicating to you and you're speaking a different language, yeah. it could translate that and provide me with a text description of what you're saying exactly. to me. Those are the kind of applications that have been used so far in augmented reality, but you just know that with Apple, they're gonna be developing apps that do like a million yeah. other things. One of the groundbreaking tech features that they've talked about is the eye tracking that they use. And I imagine Zeiss will have had a big input in that because they've been using eye tracking technology for years to design their spectacle lenses. Yeah. To monitor how people use the glasses so that they can optimize them to be perfect for different situations. Yeah. Like drive safe lenses being optimized for driving. They measured how we use our peripheral vision when we drive, how we yes. glance at the wing mirrors, etc. Or smart life lenses being optimized for digital screens yep. where they assessed how people interact with digital devices throughout yep. the day. On that topic, I was just scrolling Twitter, you know, when it got announced and mm. there was somebody that was at the actual conference and uh, got some hands-on time with the device itself and they couldn't believe how well the eye tracking was actually working. One thing with Apple is that they try to make the user interface as simple as possible. Yeah, I mean, Apple are the masters at making systems intuitive yes like the scroll wheel on the original ipod for yeah. example i mean that seems so basic now but back then that was such a revolutionary Big. way to control yeah. something yeah again you just know they're going to do that with the vision pro yeah i keep pointing at the size heads yeah <laughs> but it's it's going to look similar to that isn't it well but just way more advanced advanced yeah of course you know yeah. this is a 10 year old device yeah it's basically the modern day version of that mm -hmm. with so many different sensors and features yeah. built into it speaking of those sensors and features i do wonder about the weight because, I mean, even something like this. Yes, quite heavy. When you wear it for a period of Especially time. Especially if you add the smartphone into it, it becomes even heavier. Yeah, exactly, you, so, you so do what, feel it. What they've done is they've kept the battery external mm. so that that saves most of the weight on it. The actual frame's made out of aluminium and the resting support of the band around the back is made out of like a 3D knitted cushioning so that it's a very, very snug fit. That's like the... AirPod Pro, right? Yes, so like the mesh kind of design that they have on the, the AirPods uh, Max. Okay. The AirPods Max, so yeah. So there's clearly a lot to be excited about. Yes. But as optical professionals, there's a few concerns that we have as well, aren't there? Yes, of which one is digital eye strain. Because mm. it's funny, at the same conference, Apple were talking about how holding devices too near is a problem. Yeah. And they're going to incorporate that into uh, their devices to actually warn children to move things away yes but then the vision pro is putting a digital screen at very close proximity to the eyes yes i found that quite interesting they apple touched on uh, away from the vision pro but they touched on myopia which is uh, the technical term for short-sightedness predicted that by the year 2050 half the world's population will have some degree of myopia 
and they're going to incorporate it into the iPads and devices that young children are using nowadays, where if they feel like the iPad has been too close to them for too long, it will come up with a warning message so that parents are aware mm. that they need to spend more time outdoors or hold things further away to stop the drive of myopia. And on that subject, there are now Zeiss lenses for myopia control as well. So yes. if you have children or if you know someone with children who has short sightedness, you can now get spectacle lenses from Zeiss, as well as a few other brands, that will actually help to reduce or slow down the progression of myopia, oh, my which opinion. is an amazing breakthrough. A lot of research has been done on that. Absolutely. It's, it's a very, very big interest that I personally hold as someone who's very short-sighted. Uh, and Robert gets me all the thinnest and lightest <laughs> lenses, so... <laughs> I do, I do, but it's important to try to prevent things when we can, isn't it? Yes. And that's what myopia control lenses will do. Anyway, that's a bit of a segue back yeah. to the Vision Pro. Yes. When we're focusing at things up close, there are muscles in our eyes that have to work harder, both to direct the eyes, so we tend to converge when we look at things up close, but also muscles within the eye that have to focus to change the lens shape within your eye to see at this distance. And a problem with glasses like this in the past has been that the eyes do get tired after a while. Yeah, it's all about to do that. How, much, how much time can you really spend on these devices? Doing that for an hour yes. isn't ideal, is it? Yes. Much less two, three, four hours or all day. Yeah, we'll never truly understand, obviously, until a lot of people start using it. It's like, for example, where a lot of people started working from home after the pandemic, during the pandemic, and we saw a big rise in digital eye strain mm. because of the amount of time people were spending and straining their visual system on near objects, whether that be an iPad, a laptop, a computer, eight hours a day, nine hours a day of constant near work is a lot of stress for the visual system. And then having a device right in front of your face, we don't truly understand how much of an effect that's gonna have on the wider population. No, but we do know from experience that a lot of people do tend to get headaches and eye strain when using augmented reality glasses yes. in particular, and a little bit less, but still they can get it with yes. VR. I remember even some of my clients when I was showing them, particularly if they're a bit older, they would get a little bit disorientated with it. I kind of trust Apple to make it as natural and seamless as possible. Yes. They're gonna do the best job they can, but inherently holding a screen that far from your eyes isn't good. The flip side to that, of course, is that there is the potential to improve the vision of millions of people. Correct. A lot of people are unfortunate in the sense that they suffer from low vision. We wanna help everyone get the best vision possible. Now, for some people, or for most people, glasses will do that. But for some people, there's only so much glasses can do for them. Yeah. And that's because of various conditions. And Eye diseases. Correct. Particularly macular degeneration and cataracts, things like that. Yeah. The main prevention for those is UV protection. That's really important as well. But if you already have those diseases, it's all about maximizing the vision that you've got. Yeah. And, and that's where low vision correct. products come and in. And now a pair of glasses for those type of people can't maximize that vision by itself we have to use what we call low vision aids to complement the pair of glasses. The Vision Pro has the potential, I think, to be able to enhance things that you see. So let's say you have something two, three meters away. There are people in the world that unfortunately can't see detail at that distance, but the Vision Pro potentially could select something, magnify it and bring it larger, closer to the eyes. Yeah. And, and, and also adding on that, improve the contrast of the target. When you're looking at sort of a grainy background, it's very difficult for them to pick out those objects or the targets or what they're trying to see on those backgrounds. But if a software can superimpose black on white or white on black and improve the contrast in that sense, those little differences and details can be the difference between someone seeing something and not being able to see something. Different colors obviously improve contrast yes. or affect contrast. Maybe you could have an app that provided different filters that actually, it's like looking through different kinds of sunglasses, potentially. Simulating different tints. Yeah, there's a lot of potential applications that could improve the lives of a lot of people, improve their vision. But there's a lot to be excited for. Absolutely. And there's a lot of time to wait. Yes. Because <laughs> it's not going to be out until 2024, well, at the earliest, right? Well, they're saying it's going to be launched in early 2024 in the US, and then obviously spreading out to parts of the world in late 2024. So it's still about, best part about a year and a half. Cool. before we see it rolling out. We'll be pre-ordering a device and then <laughs> testing it out on the channel. So make sure to subscribe for that. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give us a like and subscribe to the channel for more of the best eyewear content on the internet. And we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.